the 3D, we now have the ability to design based on deflection optimization. Uh, so we've always had analysis in Risa 3D, and what happens is we check the members, and then we check for strength design, and we size the, the members up based on the strength requirements. Uh, but right now, what we can do is we add it into version 16. Uh, we have the ability to add member design rules, and here we see that there's a deflection tab. So the first tab here is size unity check. The program is, has some uh, restrictions here based on maximum and minimum depths, so that where the sizes will be suggested within this range, or width uh, or whether it's going to be maximum bending. Uh, so maybe if you have a preliminary uh, design, you may not want to go all the way up to the to full unity check. The program will size those members based on this parameters. We have now the deflection tab here. And this deflection tab allows us to put in a ratio. So the program will suggest a, sh a, a shape that will meet this ratio. And this is based on load combinations. So when we open up the model here in, in Risa 3D, we want to create some load combinations. So jumping into the load combination spreadsheet, well, we can automatically add in some separately here manually, but I like to do the load combination generator to help make this automated for us. And under the gravity tab, you'll see you can apply dead load and live load based on any code you'd like here. So I'm going to put the 2015 IBC ASD. And you'll see this option here, beam deflection options. So by checking that checkbox, we'll create some deflection load combinations automatically to fit into these deflections. I'm going to also just create some dead load, so just say generate and you'll see here that 1, 2, and 3 are the dead load, live load, and dead load plus live load combinations that fit into these ratios. You can change these, so for example, if you for any reason decide that that's not what you'd like, so if you wanted to have this be a different load combination, you can just type whatever number you'd like into that number, into this uh, deflection spreadsheet. But I'm going to keep those as my standard ones. And then beyond that, I'm going to also go ahead and create some wind load combinations as a reversible wind load. And then I'm going to say generate. And then I'll go over to seismic and I'll create some seismic load combinations with the X and Z in reversible and say generate. So now I have a list of different load combinations. And I can see that I've got all of these on. I'm going to turn the P delta on for my model. So I check P delta as well. And I'll say yes to fill that block. And now I'm ready to solve the model. So I'm going to solve the, a batch with an envelope solution, which means it's going to run all these different load combinations. It's going to separately check them, and then it's going to envelope that information. It's now sizing it based on strength, as so we're checking the code and finding out whether it meets code, um, as well as the deflection. So we'll see whether we need to size these up based on any deflection criteria. First thing I usually do is look at the design results. And when I look at those, I see that we have high code checks, pretty high here. We want to be below one, and we see that we're pretty high. So we'll sort this and just see what we really are. So we've got a long list of different members that we probably need to size up. Uh, so we would want to go to suggested shapes, which is on the results here. And we see that in the suggested shapes, there's a column that says controlling criteria. So not always is the, the strength criteria being controlled for these members. We're also seeing deflection is controlling for a lot of them. And so we can choose to size things up based on these deflection criteria as well. It's automatically picking whatever's controlling for us, so we don't have to worry about that. But let's find out a little bit more information about this member deflection by going into the member deflection spreadsheet. You'll see there's a couple new tabs. The service and the strength are broken out, so I only checked service. And then we'll see under beam deflection, we'll get the, so the total deflection listed here. And then we'll see under beam check, that's where we're going to see that the deflection is being checked per beam and it's giving us the ratio, and if it passes or fails. So if it's failing, we'll see it turn red, and that's where the program is going to size that based on that red uh, ratio here. And it also reiterates the load combinations that we ran here, so dead load, live load, and dead load plus live load. So next thing we'll do is we'll just go ahead and tell the program to solve this. Uh, so you can click this icon or right-click and say solve, again, using suggested shapes. 
it says, hey, should I do this for all the members um, as well as walls if we had any walls solutions we wanted to run? And we're just going to say, okay, I don't have any walls in my model. And it reruns the solution. Now, this is why we need to rerun the solution is because we're now distributing the loads into the, these new members and we're seeing the stiffness matrix change and then we'll be seeing that the forces will be different and the, the results will be different in all the members here. So design is iterative. You'll find that what happens is you'll look first look at a, a simple ser first solution, things will get better. We see these numbers on these code checks get a lot better and we can sort this and now see we are getting a lot better numbers, closer to one, uh, but we still have some failures. So when we go over to suggested shapes, we still see strength is still popping up here. We still have some failures on the beam deflection spreadsheet and you can go back and check that out again and you'll see that that's also failing a little bit not as much here let's scroll down we have actually it looks like pretty good in deflection we met a lot of that but we still have a couple in here and so what we might do then is say solve again with these new suggested shapes and you can go through this process over and over here until you find a solution that works for your strength and for your deflection criteria uh, so a couple iterations probably will get you there and we now see things are starting to kind of equalize here. Things look pretty good. We're looking at strength. Maybe we can start to tighten up that the design here, but we're seeing that most everything is now passing. So that's your design based on the deflection when you start a brand new model with load combinations like that. But if you have an older model that you want to open up and tailor that to what you have for this deflection criteria, I'm going to show you that. So you can open up an, an existing model and maybe you've already defined this dead load and live load and you want to see how to fit this in. So you have a, a, a kind of a rooftop model here, you have some dead loads and live loads and you need to make sure that that works uh, for deflection. So you can go ahead and if you just ran the model it wouldn't really check that and the reason being is if we go to member design rules and we look at this deflection it's empty so we don't really know what you want to do here you can go ahead and put your own uh, criteria in so it says none you can type in load combination one with a ratio and load combination two with a ratio if you wanted to do that this way and you can type whatever ratio you want in there um, or you could go ahead and use that load combination generator to create those for you automatically I'm I'm just going to let the program do one and two, which is supposed on those ratios. You can change this maybe to be 240, for example. So we can solve these, these combinations I have existing, and then I'll create, I'll solve this batch and find what, what works for these here. Uh, but it's, it, you could have done any different load combination to control that deflection. Uh, then you'd come back in here to member deflections, and we'll see here that everything works for my model. Um, so I'm not seeing any failures in there on my model here. Uh, so that all works for us. That's how you go back into an old existing model. You could still see that there's some probably things that you could size up based on strength and deflection, but it helps you see what's going on in your existing model.